Welcome to Sproutcast, where we speak with changemakers, social innovators, and entrepreneurs about how to make the world a better place. And now, here's your host, Julia Duffy. Welcome back to Sproutcast. My name is Julia Duffy, and today we're speaking with Alicia Darvel, Executive Director of B Lab Australia and New Zealand. In this episode, we chat about the B Corp model, how it compares and is interrelated with nonprofits and social enterprises, and how B Corp assessment tools can assist your organization in improving its social and environmental performance. Welcome to the show, Alicia. Thank you very much. It's lovely to be with you this morning. Before we jump into talking about what a B Corp is and what you do at B Lab and what other types of organisations um, can perhaps learn from B Corps, I really wanted to start by talking just a little about your background and first experiences of the non-profit sector and social and I guess social enterprises as well, and and perhaps how that may have impacted uh, your perspectives of the work you do now. Um. Yeah, sure. With the greatest of pleasure. So I have a background in um, arts and entertainment management and in festivals um, and, uh, I guess, uh, launching new projects more generally. So um, prior to my work at B-Lab, I used to call myself a launch manager. So I would help um, uh, predominantly entrepreneurs, but also not-for-profits get new projects off the ground. Um, my um, deeper path, um, I was um, once the CEO of the Melbourne Fringe Festival, um, so I had a wonderful few years working um, with Mel- some of Melbourne's edgiest artists. I've also worked for Melbourne um, uh, Melbourne Fashion Festival, Moonlight Cinema, and um, had the great fortune to travel to the US with the founder of Moonlight Cinema, James Hutton, to try and set up outdoor cinemas in, in America. So I've had a pretty exciting um, career, predominantly working with creative people, which is certainly what makes me excited. Um, just prior to working for B-Lab, I had the good fortune to work with Social Traders, which is a um, social enterprise incubator and policy group based in Melbourne. And social traders at that time were very keen to establish some awards for social enterprise. And I had a background in creating awards. Um, and as I moved into that sector to work with social traders on starting these social enterprise awards, I really began to see how social enterprise cemented a lot of my areas of interest in my career in one really succinct, credible way. And mostly that is that, um, I, again, really enjoy um, working with businesses and creative people to solve problems, but I was getting increasingly uh, dispirited by the not-for-profit sponsorship and fundraising and endless cycle of grant applications and was really excited to see that there were a whole lot of people trying to solve our big social and environmental problems in more creative business-led ways. Um, and I found that very stimulating. So as I had the good fortune to do something I knew well, which was setting up awards, I had exposure to some of the best social enterprises in Australia and, and learned a great deal. So I guess the best place to start, Alicia, is by asking you uh, what what is a B Corp? So a B Corp is a business with a social or environmental mission primarily that holds itself to a greater account around its transparency, uh, its return to its community and its environmental impact. And a B Corp is certified by B Lab, which is the not-for-profit I work for, um, to have that third-party endorsement that as a company, it walks the talk and doesn't just greenwash. Uh, examples of Australian B Corps are companies like Keep Cup, uh, the reusable barista takeaway coffee cup. There is 5am yogurt, which is an organic fast living consumer good based in supermarkets. Um, we're excited that Who Gives a Crap? Uh, the toilet paper company is just certified as a B Corp. Um, other big B Corps include the publicly listed Silver Chef, which is a um, 
company that provides financial support for new cafes and businesses um, as they start, and then Australian Ethical Investments, which is a publicly listed superannuation company. Uh, there's a bunch of others. There's now 101 B Corps in Australia and New Zealand. Some of our more high-profile global B Corps include um, uh, Unilever's Ben and Jerry's, uh, Patagonia, the outdoor clothing company. Rather excitingly, if you're an online shopper, um, Eileen Fisher, who is a um, women's retailer, huge women's retailer in the States, is just certified, um, as has Dr. Bronner's and Dr. Hushka. Uh, so it's a diverse group of businesses. There's now over 1,500 B Corps around the world uh, in 41 countries. So how did you first encounter the idea of B Corps and um, it originated in the US, is that correct? Yes, um, the first B Corps were um, founded in the US uh, about nine years ago now. B Corps were um, established by um, three guys who met in Stanford um, and they all went on post their undergraduate degrees to work in various sectors. Um, Andrew Cassoy became an investment banker um, Jay uh, started a basketball sneaker company called And One, and um, very soon after, Bart Houlihan um, went to join Jay in his new business, and they started a basketball sneaker company, which was um, very much aimed at 15-year-old kids who were um, playing hoops um, on the back streets, I guess. And while they didn't think that the kids so much cared about the style of business that And One was. They wanted to work in the kind of business that they would be proud of. And so they effectively set up a mission purpose led business um, very early on, the kind of business that had um, yoga for um, uh, their staff, online, um, sorry, uh, on site childcare. They used to build basketball courts in developing nations. They had really strong social and environmental policies throughout their whole business. Um, and as the business grew, um, they took on investment a number of times to, to help them scale. And they got it to a stage where really Jay and Bart realized it wasn't the kind of business that they wanted to run anymore. It had got bigger than they were keen to, 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 to lead, I guess. Um, it was at the stage where it was competing with Reebok and Nike um, basketball divisions. So they decided to sell the business. Um, and as they were getting ready for sale, their investors asked them to um, make the company as lean and mean as possible for the sale. Uh, so they found themselves being required to wind back a lot of the social benefits and um, environmental outcomes that they were so proud of to take, I guess, the leanest possible company to the sales table. Um, and when they went through the sales process, while the sale went extremely well, and I'm sure they did very well, history hasn't related how well, um, they found that they sold their business to a guy who essentially then went on to strip out all the social benefits that they held dear to run a very agile um I guess, um, brand, competitive brand. And they felt extraordinarily disappointed that as founders with a key vision, uh, all the aspects of that business didn't go forward. So after, um, I think, taking a moment to take a deep breath after going through the sale, they began to think of what kind of thing they could set up to make sure that entrepreneurs with businesses with a social or environmental mission didn't find themselves in that same position again. So they ended up... Um, uh, connecting back up with Andrew Cassoy, who'd been working in the money markets in New York, and thinking about what kind of systems change they could do to shine a light on these entrepreneurs and make sure that when they went to um, sell their businesses, their missions would be protected. And that ended up in a sort of well, a three-part organisation that B Lab has become today, although it continues to grow and and change its model. Um, but there are three parts to the to, to B Lab, and and the first is is B Corp certification, and um, we'll go more into that. But um, the B Corp certification is a bit like fair trade for business, and I think of it as a management tool. So it helps you get your house in order. It helps send a strong signal to your employees and your stakeholders that you take your mission seriously and that it's embedded throughout your organisation. But the second thing that they required 
um, and, and have now spent some time establishing is for entrepreneurs to change their articles of association to reflect their return to their stakeholders and to embed their mission into their constitution. And the key reason that they did this, and this is really important for the movement, is that um, that directors can make a decision at the board table that uh, looks after both the shareholder and the stakeholder. And more importantly, at the point of sale or during an IPO, the directors can make a decision about the person they sell their business to um, to an organisation that will look after both their shareholders and their stakeholders. Uh, and we talk about that, I guess, in the scenario that say you were being offered $25 a share for your company and you knew that um, that particular buyer was going to break up your Australian operations and offshore uh, a lot of your manufacturing versus someone who was um, willing to pay you $20 a share but keep the Australian organisation together and all the manufacturing onshore, then we want the director to be able to make that decision. And so the third part of what we're trying to do is work very closely with philanthropists and impact investors to try and drive money into this sector. So we believe that if a B Corp or a business is B Corp certified, then um, you send a clear signal to your stakeholders. And then if you have this benefit corp uh, um, legislation where you've embedded your um, mission into your constitution, then we believe you're perfectly poised to increase the scale or scope of your business. And as an impact investor or an investor who's interested in a return to the social as well as the financial bottom line of the business, you can feel confident that if you invest in a B Corp, as the B Corp scales and you exit the investment, you know that the mission of the business will continue because it's embedded in the constitution of the business. And we think that's how we will help entrepreneurs with a social and environmental purpose to scale their business and, and, and make a business change the world. So it sounds like B Corp has uh, a fascinating background and a, a kind of general approach to to trying to improve what all types of businesses are doing. And I'm wondering kind of from the perspective of organisations that are looking at B Corp and looking at the B Corp model, what it is that might appeal to them about it and why you're finding that people are wanting to sign up for this. Sure. Um, so we have an online impact assessment, which um, is at beimpactassessment.net. Hopefully you can include the link um, in the podcast, after the podcast, uh, which is a free and confidential impact assessment to help any business measure their effectively their triple bottom line. Uh, and so um, anybody, any company, either profit or not for profit, can log on to the impact assessment and get a baseline and you can assess how your company performs against dozens of, uh, um, against dozens of best, best practices around employee, community and environmental impact. So for us, what we find is many um, businesses use it as a tool to check that they're mission is baked throughout their business. So quite often, uh, particularly if you're a new business or even a business that's been operating for five or 10 years, sometimes you just get caught up in the day-to-day uh, concerns of running a business and not always thinking about whether or not every aspect of your business is creating impact. So you may have a really strong uh, social impact in one part of your deliverables, but are you also thinking about the diversity of your board? Do you know where your products and services are purchased or purchased from? Do you buy from social enterprise? Do you look out for women-owned businesses? We ask you questions like, what's the ratio between the highest paid staff member and the lowest paid staff member? We ask you to think about the kinds of policies and procedures you have for your employees things like um, whether or not you encourage your employees to do volunteering in the community as well as work in your own business. So what we actually do is provide almost like a roadmap for building rigour into your business. So we require you to document all your policies and procedures and really look deeply into your business. So it becomes an incredibly constructive tool, almost like having a consultant run an eye over your business 
um, which is very valuable for a private business that isn't necessarily given the same scrutiny as, as a publicly listed company. And it can be a constructive way for a growing business to really set themselves up for success. So we find on the first level that while businesses are interested in certifying as a B Corp for a range of reasons, which I'm happy to go into, they actually find the process of going through the certification while rigorous and more time consuming than I would care to admit, uh, it's often uh, once they come out the other side, they feel like it's been a real addition um, to, to that business. But the reason why businesses certify as B Corps, there's a bunch of reasons and it depends a lot on the kind of business that you are. If you're a service company and, and you're working B2B, uh, it's really important to signal to your prospective um, uh, contracts and, and, and um, colleagues and potential clients that you are serious about what you're doing and that while you might be recommending that they look deeper into their business, if you haven't shown to them that you are walking the talk and really got your house in alignment through this third-party certification, how can you show, how can you recommend that to another company? So it's that sense of being able to have that third-party endorsement. The other really key issue is for employee engagement and retention. We find, um, and documentation and, and research is showing that the Generation Y no longer wants to check their values at the door when they, they go work for a new business. They want to work day to day in a business that aligns with their values. And doing the B Corp certification sends a signal to your staff, both potential and currently employed, that you take your desire to change the world seriously and don't just pay lip service. Um, also, when you go through the certification, a number of businesses like um, Harwood Andrews, the local law firm, and Etsy have used this as a really strong employee engagement tool. So they've used it as a company-wide hack. When you go through the B Corp certification, you need to reach 80 points. But when you become a B Corp, you need to recertify every two years. And most B Corps are constantly trying to improve your score. So the ability to sit down with your whole company and look into every aspect of their business about how they can improve their impact has proven a really constructive tool. Second, uh, thirdly, uh, that idea of finding your tribe has become really important. Uh, particularly, we have a really flourishing B Corp community in Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Adelaide, and it's growing in Perth and, and Darwin. Um, what we find is that the B Corps get together regularly, and there's that sense of if you've gone through the impact assessment and you run your business like I run mine, you must be the kind of business I want to deal with. So increasingly, we're finding the B Corps both networking and doing business together because there's that first layer of um, are you the kind of company I want to be a, want to work with is is removed because there's that again third party endorsement. Uh, also, um, it provides a warm set of leads into new countries. So if you're looking at growth into the US or increasingly the UK or Europe, to be able to say you're a B Corp where there's a um, strong a strong group um, overseas and strong reputation for B Corps is becoming really constructive. Uh, so, uh, for example, um, Peak Cup recently went to the US to speak to Whole Foods, which is a, really one of the meccas of conscious consumerism around the world and, and certainly in the US. And when they went to talk to the buyers at one of the um, districts of Whole Foods, they said to the buyer, they presented the product, who said, look, we love what you're doing and we can see how it fits into our cafe supply chain, but how do we know that your business is in order if we take you on? And they said, well, actually, we're a B Corp. And that gave um, Whole Foods the confidence to write them a purchase order like they'd never seen before because it just ticked that box and provide that assurance for, for them. Uh, you spoke earlier about B Corps being perhaps an appealing alternative for yourself from uh, the traditional non-profit and social enterprise space. And I'm interested to know your thoughts on on why someone who was thinking of establishing a non-profit or social enterprise might want to consider um, a B Corp instead. And I guess perhaps the overlap between those two sectors, how you kind of think that happens. 
Sure. Can I just flag that I don't think B Corp's an alternative for social enterprise? I think that, um, uh, yes. So I see that, um, so I mentioned that the B Corps all, all scored out of um, a possible 200 points. And so the highest scoring B Corps uh, are up around um, uh, 140 points in Australia. And I would consider them social enterprises. So not every B Corp is a social enterprise, but a social enterprise can be a B Corp. So it depends very much um, on the definition of social enterprise, which is very much about a mission-led business who returns their profits back towards achieving their mission. So, um, and, and there's a you know more detailed definition from that. But if you take the definition as being mission-driven and, and returning your profits to, to your mission, there are a number of B Corps who certainly fit that definition. Um, so the short answer is that um, I think that the not-for-profit sector is a really tough one. Um, I think it's incredibly important and there are a number of issues that uh, should um, and regularly achieve, receive a lot of philanthropy and solving big social and environmental issues and absolutely should be there um, and should be not-for-profits and, and deserve our um, tax-deductible support. However, it's increasingly competitive market uh, for philanthropy and, and um, grants. And I think that for the longevity of your business and indeed the sanity of your CEO, there's real merit in designing a business that has an enterprise uh, central to it so that you can make enough money to create that return to your mission and uh, survive in a flourishing marketplace without the requirement to, to, to reach out for grants on a regular basis. So I think it provides longevity for your business. And I think that every business should be striving to have uh, an equal footing for both profit and their purpose or mission. If you aren't achieving profit, um, you can't achieve your mission. So that idea of then what you do with your um your, your profits and how you achieve your mission is really where I guess the secret source of your business model is. Now, I understand that non-profit organisations are actually able to become certified as B Corps in Australia, but that's not necessarily the case um, internationally. Why is that something that B Corps doing in Australia? And could you explain a little bit about the difference here? Sure, sure. Um, so in um, we are following B Lab UK, our UK colleagues who have done a lot of work around the number of different legal models that exist in the um, UK. And as you would know, our uh, legal models in Australia are much more modelled on the UK system than they are on the US. So there's a much clearer differentiation in the US between for profit and not for profit. Whereas there's sort of a series of grey in Australia and the UK. Um, and so the UK designed a legal model test, which we've adopted for Australia to work out whether or not you can certify your business. And uh, so you can become a not-for-profit, uh, you can become a B Corp as a not-for-profit in Australia if you meet a few conditions. And first, you need to operate in a competitive market. So that means you need to sell a product or service, which might include membership fees, subscriptions or consulting service. And secondly, you cannot be majority philanthropically funded. So more than 50% of your revenue needs to be derived from the earned income from your business model. And finally, it's unlikely that a B Corp with DGR status or an organisation which is majority owned by the government can be certified as a B Corp. And that's because we know that while public services and charities have very important roles to play in solving social problems, the B Corp certification is specifically aimed at business and we are really trying to, as I said, shine a light on those entrepreneurs who are using business as a force for good. So if you're setting up your model as a not-for-profit to be able to gain donation and philanthropic support, you're not um, necessarily operating in the same sector as us and we most definitely operate um, in the same marketplaces and support not-for-profits. Um, but we believe there's an important role to play for business and they're our um, key members. So I understand that in the US they have a specific company or legal structure for B Corps where you can um, ensure that this process of embedding the organisation's mission in the constitution 
uh, happen successfully and perhaps permanently. Um, could you tell me whether there is um, an expectation or a plan to do something like that in Australia? Because I understand you're not currently, um, it's not currently available. Sure, thank you. Yes, so um, in the US, we've created a new legal form called the Benefit Corporation, which allows companies to embed their return to their stakeholders and their mission into their constitution, as we discussed earlier. And it's been passed in 31 states, largely with bipartisan support. Some of the more high-profile benefit corporations in the US include Patagonia and Kickstarter, both who um, embedded their um, mission into their constitution because that they wanted to ensure the longevity of their mission uh, long, well, kicks out largely um, to send a signal to investors on how they want to operate their business. And Patagonia more so because Yvonne Chouinard uh, wants to make sure that the mission of Patagonia is embedded as the next generations take over Patagonia and he retires. So in Australia, we've spent some time uh, talking to lawyers and found that under our Corporations Act, which is federal law, you can't actually embed your return to your or make a decision that um, uh, that uh, adv- is advantageous to both your shareholders and stakeholders and guarantee that your director will be protected. So we have been working with a uh, policy working group over the last year to design a new legal model for Australia. And we're excited that in the next month, uh, the the guy who wrote the model legislation to the US, a gentleman by the name of William Clark, is coming to Australia to help us start that conversation with stakeholders, B Corps and government about what a new legal form would look like for Australia. So rather ambitiously, we would like to change corporations' law at a federal level, and we're just refining now what that change would look like. But it seems most likely that what that change would be is that we would recommend that Parliament passes a new legal form. So when you set up your company or when you become a B Corp, you instead of becoming a PTY LTD or a company limited by guarantee, you would become a benefit corporation. And um, we should have, for those who are interested, that model legislation to share in the coming months. And we're about to partner with the Governance Institute of Australia to do a series of events in March uh, to discuss more about what that new legal model would look like. Excitingly, we found in the US that the Benefit Corp legislation has actually become much bigger than the B Corp certification, and it has become the legal model of choice for many startups. So it means that as a startup, you can embed your mission from the beginning, which really uh, provides a comfort for a social entrepreneur to know that as they as they start their company and seek investment, that they're sending a clear signal about the outcomes and impact they uh, um, expect, expect to achieve. Excellent. And I don't, I don't want to um, ask you questions necessarily about legislation that isn't settled yet, but I'm interested in the, the opportunities, I guess, that, so the idea is that your mission is permanently embedded in the constitution, but um, how can, uh, in that situation, organisations, I guess, potentially move with the time if needed to to change what their organisation can be for? Because uh, uh, um, non-profit organisations, I guess, have do have the opportunity to to adjust their mission um, when necessary. Would, would this be possible for... Uh, oh, sh- sure. I, th- I mean, I, I think that there's, there's no doubt and it would just be a matter much the same as um, under your current um, if you're if you're an organisation uh, um, you and you want to make a change to the objectives of your company, you need to make them at a board level and, and lodge them with um, ASTIC or the governing body. You can still make that change. But we see mission as being not necessarily your business model, but actually the outcome or the problem you're trying to solve. So um, it may be, uh, for example... So Patagonia's mission statement, for example, is build the best product, cause no unnecessary harm, use business to inspire and implement solutions to environmental crisis. So as you can see, that's a really big um, uh, mission statement that they're seeking to solve and whether or not they're doing um, 
plant-based wetsuits or really or repairing jackets and providing 10-year guarantees is not necessarily embedded in that mission statement because they have a bigger issue that they're trying to use business to solve. So I don't see that that scope would limit you changing the product or service. But what I imagine is that you've set up your business to solve a specific issue. Now, we've spoken about some of the competitive advantages that you get from B Corp certification for businesses. So I'm wondering what you'd say um, non-profit organisations would get from certification um, beyond what perhaps they're already getting from some of their commitments as a non-profit organisation. Yeah, sure. I think the greatest um, opportunity for the non-profit sector is to use the free impact assessment. Whether or not they go on to become a B Corp is somewhat immaterial, although clearly, you know, if they're interested, we'd love to have them. But the impact assessment really allows the not-for-profit sector to um, have some rigour behind their organisation and really think through, again, the impact of themselves as a business within uh, a bigger community. So um, I've worked in a lot of not-for-profits, as I've mentioned before, and on the board of the Stella Prize now. And one of the biggest issues for -for not-for-profit is around governance and and transparency of their operation. And so we can just provide a framework for that not-for-profit organisation to think through how they are um, operating uh, in terms of their governance. And the other thing we can do is help a not-for-profit really think through how they're achieving their impact, their, the impact of their mission um, in society. So um, I think we provide a robust set of tools for any business to use. And as I sort of mentioned in passing, when you go through the impact assessment, we provide a whole lot of free uh, templates for policies and procedures for a business. So, for example, as a not-for-profit, I know you run really skinny, um, and to think about what your employee handbook might look like is a nice to have sometimes rather than something that's on the forefront of your day-to-day operations. But you can download employee handbooks from our certification pipeline and use them as a basis for your business. So we hope that to help every business strengthen um, their governance transparency and their impact, and we welcome um, any sector using the tools that we have available. Excellent. And are you finding that new or startup organisations are looking to some of these tools that you have available to assist them in in structuring their organisation from the outset, or is it also um, or more likely to be existing businesses that are benefiting from that? Uh, no, we definitely find that um, our tools are constructive for startups. And um, one of my favourite startups, uh, B Corps, is a company called um, Eat Me Chuckneys, which is based in Sydney. And Ankit and his mother uh, use either fair trade or ugly fruit to create chutney and jams. And Ankit used uh, the impact assessment from the very beginning of uh, establishing his business because he wanted to really think through not only the impact of the chutney and and using the fallen and ugly fruit, which he talks about so eloquently, but also how he could best create impact in his business. And he's been really constructive and he's thought about um, his hiring policy and as it's grown, he and his mother have hired a local um, refugee woman to work with them in their kitchen and is really thinking about every positive touch point of his business. And he says that it's incre- it was incredibly constructive for him to scale his business, which he's still scaling. Uh, you need to be um, trading for 12 months before you can become a B Corp in Australia um, and it, we truly believe that that first year is really hard work and that uh, entrepreneurs really need to focus on working out how to make mon- money and test their business models. So while we wouldn't compel you to do the whole impact assessment, we really recommend it as a framework for thinking about every aspect of your business as, as you're setting up and, again, relish the opportunity for uh, startups to take whatever is useful from our tools. Excellent. So I guess it can be kind of a, an aim in the first year, perhaps, to 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 get to that milestone of being a, being able to be certified. Absolutely. And increasingly, we are working with the philanthropic and 
um, and investors to look for um, biz- uh, look for funds who are willing to drive money into that sector. Um, and I think that if you become a B Corp, you send a very clear signal to your investors, again, that you take your mission very seriously. And as it's an early market for impact investment in Australia, but it's, there's definitely demand and it can become a really good way, as I said, to differentiate yourself in a crowded startup market as you hit the 12 month mark. What is your your vision for B Corps and for B Lab uh, looking into the future in Australia? What would be kind of a um, successful outlook for B Corps that you're hoping to um, make happen, I guess? Sure. Um, for us, it's very much about creating a thriving community of B Corps. So as I said, we've hit the 100 mark um, in Australia and New Zealand. We've, we're obviously keen to keep growing the community and we're keen to round it out so that ultimately as a B Corp, um, every part of your supply chain would be furnished by another B Corp. So we would love for you to be choosing a B Corp accountant, a B Corp lawyer, buying from a B Corp stationary company and using... Um, uh, recyclable, uh, or sorry, renewable energy, uh, driven by a B Corp company. So one of our key goals is to make sure that every part of a B B supply chain is, is, is now covered by B Corp. And again, likewise, on the consumer front, we're really keen that as a conscious consumer, you could purchase almost entirely from B Corps and feel confident that the companies you're buying from are the kind of companies that look after the environment, employees, and that community, as well as producing a product that you would be pleased to have in your house. Uh, we just started our first Bastard in Consumer Goods campaign, asking consumers to look more deeply into products they buy. And you can log on to our website now and win a hamper of $500 worth of B Corp products, so you can get a sense of who's already in the marketplace. On a greater level, I guess, um, I am keen to see the Australian and New Zealand B Corps thrive globally. So I continue to work with my colleagues all around the world to provide robust networks into the UK, US, Europe, and South America, and increasingly into Asia for the B Corps to be trading with each other. And finally, my greatest desire is that every business, and particularly small to medium businesses, would be using our impact assessment to report every year on their return to their stakeholders as well as reporting on their return to their shareholders. So my view is if you use the impact assessment and get 40 points and use our improve your score reports to get up to potentially 60 points in a year, that's every bit as valuable as you becoming a B Corp and every bit as desirable. So I would like to see our impact assessment and companies thinking about how they measure their impact as being as important as as their return to their investors and shareholders. Excellent. I think you you mentioned earlier, but in case people didn't catch it, where can you go to uh, to do the assessment? Sure. So um, if you're interested in finding more about B Corps, you can go to our website, which is bcorporation.com.au. But we also have a standalone website, which is the is B impactassessment.net, which is where the free and confidential impact assessment is. And as I said, um, anyone can use it, and it's not until you've gone all the way through the certification process, which is a number of steps that we're happy to talk you through if you're interested, that you pay for a certification. So you're welcome to use the impact assessment for as long as it is useful for you um, and uh, in the comfort and privacy of your own business. Excellent. So I think we've had um, a really interesting discussion today and I'm, I'm so glad that we've been able to have you on the show to um, let people know a little bit more about what B Corps are and what B Corp certification and assessment is. So thank you so much for speaking with me today, Alicia. It's That's been a real fine. pleasure. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you very much for your time. One more quick thing before you go. Early bird tickets are now available for Sprout Summit 2016. This year we're in Melbourne on the 29th of July. Check out SproutSummit.com for more information or to sign up to our newsletter for the latest program updates and announcements. We hope to see many of you there and that you have the opportunity to meet other Sproutcast listeners and hear from some amazing speakers on doing business and doing